I've wanted to build a kayak for a while. The wooden strip built ones are cool, but I also like making things out of metal. I figured the easiest way to make a metal one would be to use the plans for a plywood build, have the pieces laser cut, and weld them together. Easy peasy, a month tops. Definitely faster and cheaper than cedar strips. I happened to get the major parts right before aluminum suppliers fucking tripled their prices, so the cost wasn't the worst initially, but I was way off on time frame. This was my first aluminum welding project, so I kept all the offcuts to practice on. Once I figured it out well enough, I started welding together each panel. I had to cut the profiles in half to fit them on the 4x8 sheets. The metal I'm using is 5052 alloy, 1 millimeter or 40 thousandths thick. I could already TIG steel, but aluminum is a different animal, and this was not the most forgiving project to learn on. I was hoping I could get away with a MIG welder for this, which is a big reason why I thought it would go faster than it did. I bought a whole MIG setup with the spool gun and everything, but it refused to strike an arc consistently, and once it did, it would burn through the sheet almost immediately. So that sucks, but at least I have two of my own welders now. This design came with four frames. I added rows of holes to the panels to line up with each one. Here I'm using them to hold the skin in place with some wire. This will keep everything aligned as I tack it together. Even after deciding to TIG the skin, I intended to use the MIG to plug weld the frames through these holes, sealing them in the process. I got it to work a couple times with scraps, but the difference in thickness caused problems on the real thing, and I had to dremel them apart. One of many problems that I excluded from the video for simplicity. For the majority of the tacks, I was able to use a scrap of bent sheet and a pair of long reach vice grips to hold the panels together. Aluminum expands a lot when welding, so even if the alignment was good enough for another weld a few inches away, it wouldn't stay that way if I tried. So I had to move the clamps after every single tack. I did not count them, but there were a lot. I couldn't get the very front and back of the lower panels to twist as much as they needed to, so I decided to cut them off and tack in smaller, easier to bend pieces. My first attempt took forever, and at some point I dropped the kayak and smashed all the little pieces. I was pretty pissed, left it on the floor for a week. Later I replaced both ends with two halves, welded together flat before bending into shape. All of my kayaking so far has happened in pretty tame waters. I have no intentions to go through rapids or ocean in this or really any kayak. So when I was selecting a design, I just picked something general use and free. There were simpler ones out there, but this one was the coolest looking, and I'd be lying if I said I weren't building a metal kayak mostly for style. It is 12 feet long and about 28 inches wide at its max. The website I got it from has a number of plans for various kayaks and even small sailboats. I'll put a link in the description. Yeah. Oh. 
looks like a boat. I tacked together the front and rear top panels before adding the outside ones that ran the whole length. I was making this up as I went along the whole time, so I don't remember my exact logic, but I didn't want the final scene to be either the one down the center or the joint between top and bottom. Looking back, I think it was the right way to go regardless. It was pretty clear the holes I added to the skin were no longer going to be welded shut. The frames are three times the thickness, so even when I tried to plug weld with a TIG, by the time the frames started to melt, the heat had already gaped the shit out of the hole in the sheet. So I decided to modify the frames to accept screws, and just seal them with silicone later. To do this, I scribed lines on pieces of flat bar, and aligned them with the holes in the skin before marking their positions. Then I drilled and tapped each hole. With all of the flat bars installed, I put the frame back and tacked the pieces in place. I only welded the inside corners because I didn't want to grind my welds flat if I did the outside too. One fillet weld is good enough for this anyway. The front and rear frames were solid, so I remade them in flat bar to save some weight. Since I didn't have the top panels all assembled yet, I had to approximate the flange positions without them. On the front and rear frames, I clamped the piece to a straight edge and set one end on the frame and the other on the tip of the kayak. This got me close enough. When I started attaching the full length top panels, I tried out a new clamping method with some magnets and heavy steel hinges. Obviously it wasn't as secure as actual clamps, but the vice grips I was using usually had to be propped up on the other end to avoid bending the sheet metal under their own weight. Next I started attaching the top panels. They required a bit of trimming, despite trying to hold the sides in place while I modified the frames, the geometry must have shifted a bit. This is where the magnet trick really came in handy. My clamps wouldn't reach the middle of these final seams, but I could put the magnets and hinges anywhere I could reach, or push them with a stick. The front panel needed some light trimming on the sides as well, but the front third or so actually had a gap. So I bolted together some scrap wood and used it to squeeze the sides together.
cut off all the skinny little pieces at the ends and replace them with one solid, easier to weld piece. Both ends also needed solid mounts for the rope cleats that I'll use to carry the kayak. I used stainless threaded inserts for extra strength in the two cleat screws. These aren't typical for kayaks, but I thought they looked cool and boaty. Here I'm doing the first seam weld. It's not much of a problem yet, but just look at how much the metal expands and contracts with each bead. This is part of what makes aluminum difficult to work with. recent problem I've encountered. I'm finding out that especially on the panels that are at uh, steeper angles to each other, they are moving far too much and making it hard to fill in the gap. Uh, it's probably got about half as many tacks as I need, but uh, since it's all put together at this point, I can't exactly be clamping both pieces anymore. So I had to get creative. I've got this pair of stands that'll let me position the hull at basically any angle I want. And a row of eye hooks on the back of the workbench where I can hook this sash chain attached to a box of hammers. That does a pretty good job of keeping the seam tight as I add in tacks in between the existing ones. At this point I felt like I was taking a step backwards and I had already missed all the good kayaking weather. It had been occupying my whole workbench for four months, so I took a break from it to work on other stuff. So it's a few months later now, I've resumed working on the kayak. I would like to get it done, or at least floatable, before it starts getting too warm so I can actually use it this year. And in the interest of getting that done a little faster, I haven't been filming. You can see I've got one side of it just about completely welded. Don't look too close. This time I found a bit of a shortcut. In most places, if I made another tack within about an inch and a half of an existing one, the metal didn't move enough to matter. So I made two or so more tacks for every one that was already there, but I didn't have to clamp it every time and it went relatively quickly. Since I didn't film the seam welds, we'll just skip to the last one. When building a wooden boat, the last plank in the hull is celebrated as the whiskey plank. I adapted the tradition to my metal boat and called this the whiskey weld. And that is the difficult part done, I hope. Let's go for a boat ride. This is the most complex thing I've built and recorded, so I broke it up into two parts. 
In the second video, I'll show the various things I attach to make this bare hull functional. As I'm putting this video together, the kayak is done and I have taken it out on the James River successfully. So unless I get hit by a bus, you don't have to worry about part two not materializing. And that's unlikely considering I live in American suburban hell with no public transit. I'm just here for the garage. Anyway, hope to see you next time.